Hi everyone, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna take a look at a beautiful orchid called Phalaenopsis bulina. Now I'm not a huge fan of Phalaenopsis orchids, but I have to say I'm completely in love with this orchid. Now the Phalaenopsis bulina is actually a species orchid. This means that the way you see it here, this is how it looks like in nature as well. So it is not a hybrid genetically engineered to look or smell like this, which is absolutely wonderful to think that something like this was created created naturally. So already, let's start the discussion with the foliage. Immediately you will see a major difference between the foliage of this orchid and any other Phalaenopsis orchid. The leaves are just so glossy, rounded and compact that they are absolutely delicious. And I have to tell you, I'm not a fan of Phalaenopsis foliage. Also, if you take a closer look, you can see they're pretty wavy. Now, this is very normal for this orchid. So if you have a balina and it looks like this, don't worry. This is the natural growth pattern. Okay, now let's take a look at the flower spike. It emerges from between the leaves, just like any other Phalaenopsis orchid, but it's really, really short. And actually, the flower is produced very close to the leaves. And what's even more interesting about the flower and the way it is shaped is that it kind of leans on the foliage. I've seen quite a lot of pictures of the balina on the internet, and in all the pictures, the flowers tend to lean on the foliage. I find this really, really nice. Now, this flower spike has another tiny bud right here, so it will be very interesting to see how this flower arranges itself. Okay, now let's get to the fun part, the actual flower. Needless to say, it is spectacular. I absolutely love the colors. This wonderful magenta color is electrifying. And I'm pretty sure it will mess a bit with the color settings of my camera, but I'll do my best. So as you can see, the color starts from the bottom of the sepals and actually bleeds into the other petals. It is a wonderful, wonderful effect. While the petals themselves seem to have a sort of buttery color, very subtle, but it's really, really nice. Now the flower is not very big, but it's certainly bigger than the Tetraspis, which has quite tiny flowers. So I don't think you'll have trouble seeing it. And from what I understand, this orchid can produce from one to three flowers per inflorescence. Usually this is the natural pattern for this orchid. Now the good news is this orchid is a sequential bloomer. This means that you shouldn't cut the flower spike if it's still green because it has the possibility to rebloom for years and years. And while this orchid grows, it will produce more and more spikes. So it can be quite an impressive show in time. Now, the thing that the Bellina is most famous for is actually the fragrance. And I have to tell you, it is something that I've never encountered with any other orchid. Now, on the first day when it opened, I was a little bit bummed because it smelled just like the Phalaenopsis Leodoro. I love that smell, but I kind of was hoping for something else. And from the second day, actually, this orchid changed its fragrance completely. Now, it's pretty hard to describe it because it's a blend of sweetness and sourness, but in the good way, and rainbows and unicorns and Jackie and everything nice in this world. And I thought about how I should describe it. And to me, it has a fruity quality, so I can describe it as a delicious cocktail drink made out of exotic fruit. Now, the fragrance is kind of layered. It has an aftertaste of grenadine syrup, I think. I think this is the ingredient that um, I really like in cocktail drinks, and I think this is how this orchid smells like if you're in the same room with it, because the fragrance is quite strong on this one. If you get closer to the flower, all the other exotic fruit fragrances start to burst, and it's just, I'm telling you, it's mouth-watering. And there's no better way to describe the fragrance of this orchid other than simply mouth-watering. It does not smell like a flower. And you guessed it, the fragrance of this orchid, I think, is starting to become my favorite orchid fragrance. It is a personal taste because I go mental for fruity fragrances, but this is just so mouth-watering. It really, really carries me to a beach with a cocktail drink in my hand and everything is nice and sunny and it's just... When you look at it, you're instantly happy. So I cannot believe a Phalaenopsis orchid actually can make me feel like this. I'm not a fan of Phalaenopsis orchids, 
but I have to tell you I will get more species particularly the summer blooming species the ones that don't necessarily produce a lot of flowers but the ones that carry beautiful fragrances now it is said that the violacea which is kind of like his cousin or her cousin smells better than this I highly doubt that but I do have a violacea as well when it will bloom I will tell you but because the violacea is a parent of the Leodoro, I suspect it will be sweeter than this. So I think I actually prefer the Bellina. So if you do like fruity fragrances, definitely you have to have this orchid. Not only it smells good, but it looks amazing. Okay, so if you've enjoyed this video, please like and share. If you'd like to see more videos from me with orchids, click subscribe right here. You can also leave me comments and suggestions for videos in the comments section below. If you click on the left side of your screen, you will visit orchidnature.com where you can find care sheets, identification sheets and forums. And if you click on the right side of your screen, you will see another video with a beautiful Phalaenopsis orchid. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!